Hey guys, I just wanted to make a video for you because you've all asked for some advice and tips for the alternative to practical CIE physics paper six. So here I am. Now the first thing I want you to practice is those tables because remember they'll constantly ask you to draw results tables or label the headings in the table together with the units. Practice, practice, practice. Along with that, you need to practice graph drawing. That's particularly important with physics making sure you're happy when you need to use a line graph which remembers when you have continuous data versus when things like bar charts are more applicable because you have categoric data a directly proportional graph remember is a line graph that passes through the origin <laughs> my friends playing their piano <laughs> you could very easily be asked to plan an investigation so in order to do that properly you want an independent variable so remember that's what you're going to change it's always good to give a range of values you'll want a dependent variable so that's what you're going to measure name any specific apparatus as well as three to four if not more control variables which is what you're keeping the same you need to provide a brief method together with, again, suitable apparatus. You want to repeat and calculate an average. So you're repeating for each value as well as doing the whole experiment at least three times. And in physics, it's always good to plot a graph. So if you're asked to investigate the resistance of a component in an electrical circuit, an appropriate graph would be a voltage current graph so that the gradient would allow you to find the resistance. Coupled with that, remember with electrical components, do make sure you've covered every single symbol. So recognize a diode, be able to draw a fuse, etc. Now, one other thing they like to ask you CIE is checking that your ability to distinguish between validity, reliability and accuracy. Reliability is all to do with repeats. So repeating for each value that you've chosen as your independent variable calculating a mean that enables you to also discover anomalies and discard them because remember they will make your conclusions completely wrong again plotting a graph will help you with your reliability accuracy is all to do with how correct your actual results are so in order to improve accuracy you might want to use smaller intervals so if you're looking at current values go down to 0.5 amps 1 amp 1.5 amps as opposed to going one, two, three, four. So you're increasing the number of values you're examining. If you're looking at volume measurements, that could be reading from the bottom of the meniscus. It's all about making sure your answers are as close to the right value as possible. Validity is all to do with control variables, making sure you're maintaining your control variables to your best ability. So if one of your control variables is temperature, you'd want to use something like a thermostatically controlled water bath. You'll often be asked to check scales and read the value of measurements of things like ammeters, galvanometers, etc. The only thing I can say here is do as many past paper questions as possible because some of those scales are difficult to read and you'll only get better through practice. Right, I hope you guys found this helpful and that you could hear everything I was saying. Good luck and let me know how you get on.